Please get a copy down. Up first is number 12. Whoa, hey -o. Let's try that one again. There we go, that looks better. Can somebody read number 12 for me, please? Okay, and they want you to simplify, right? So simplify just means that, right? Make things as small as possible, get rid of as many parentheses as you can. So the whole idea behind these properties have been common bases, right? So what's the base for the first set of parentheses? Two-thirds. So I have a base of two-thirds here, and what's the base here? Two-thirds. So if I have a repeated base being multiplied together, what can I do with the powers? Right, you add them. So I carry over my base, and what's negative five plus four? Negative one. Okay. So now that negative one has to go on to each piece, right? So technically, I'm going to distribute the negative 1 and get 2 to the negative first over 3 to the negative first. Is everybody okay with where that came from or no? Right, because this is a 1 and a 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, so am I allowed to have negative power stuff? No, so where does this 2 have to go? On the bottom with a power of 1 and 3. On top with a power of 1 and what's 3 to the first? And 2 to the first. 2. Now that's kind of a lot of work. All right, there's actually a shortcut up here. A negative power on a fraction, and I mean, notice how the fraction is inside the set of parentheses, right? A negative power outside a set of parentheses basically means you're going to take the reciprocal of whatever's inside the parentheses. So what's the reciprocal of two-thirds? So you can actually take this and go directly to three-halves to the first. So if you take the reciprocal of the fraction, that negative sign will flip and change. Everybody okay with that? Because that's what a reciprocal actually means is it's the negative exponent of it. And then 3 to the first is 3, 2 to the first is 2. Either method works. Okay, just make sure you're accurate. You mean from here? Yeah, yeah like um, technically what's going on here is you've got a 2 to the negative first over a 3 to the negative first, right? So by definition, the 2 to the negative first becomes a 1 over 2 all over 3 becomes a 1 over 3, right, because of the property for negative exponents. So how do you divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, right? So we're going to take our numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, and that's actually how we're getting to this 3 over 2. Okay? So if you just remember, instead of, because I know you guys don't like the fraction side, if you remember that a negative exponent means that you change its location, that's basically what you're doing. When you change the location, you're dividing by the fractions. Okay? Yes, sir. So you're saying, like, if it's two-thirds to the negative fifth? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you took two-thirds to the negative fifth, the negative exponent part means that you take the reciprocal. So your first step here, you can actually jump to three halves to the fifth and then distribute the power of 5 down into 3 to the 5th all over 2 to the 5th. And then because they're whole numbers, you get 243 all over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, because it's a negative exponent outside. So whenever you see a negative outside of parentheses, take the reciprocal of whatever is inside and that negative goes away. Because it's just like when we change location, it goes from a negative to a positive. It's the same idea. Okay? And this only works because we're putting a negative exponent on the 2 and the 3. So we know that the 2 is going to change its location to get rid of the negative exponent, and the 3 is going to change its location to get rid of its negative exponent. So that's what I mean by it's only if everything is inside parentheses. If I had this, is the 3 involved with that negative 5? No, so this is where you're going to have to go 1 over 2 to the 5th over 3. And you'll get 1 to the 5th over 2 to the 5th times 1 over 3 because the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so it can get messy in a hurry if you're not paying attention to your parentheses. So it's like I said Friday. As we go on with this and we do more and more with substitution and manipulation, your parentheses are even more and more important. Okay? So some of you have gotten by because you're like, ah, I don't really need to pay attention to parentheses. That's going to change in a hurry as we move through 5, 6, and 7. Okay? 
So sorry to show so much on that, but are there any questions on one of those solutions for 12? Did I answer all the questions along the way? Okay. So number 14, can I get number 14, please? Oh, okay. So what, what do you do when you take a power to a power? So first of all, how many bases do you see? We only have one base, right? So that base is going to be hanging around for a while. So if we only have one base, a lot of our properties aren't really going to be used. So what do you notice? What does this thing have? It only has one base, but it has two what? Two exponents. So what happens when you take a power to a power? What do you do with the powers? You multiply them. So what's negative 5 times 2? Negative 10. Everybody okay with that? Okay, am I allowed to have a negative exponent? So a negative exponent outside a set of parentheses, what do I do with the parentheses? With the item inside the parentheses? Take the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of one-half? Okay, so I get 2 to the power is a positive, right? And what is 2 to the tenths? 1024? Sorry, I'm a computer nerd. Like, have you guys ever noticed that? The numbers for computer, for processing speed, particularly for like gigabytes of RAM or RAM size, it started off with the 16-bit processor in the Sega Genesis, and then it went to an N64, and before that was the 32X, right? So we went from 16 to 32 to 64, right? And then you have 128, you have 256, you have 512, and you have one gigabyte, which is 1,024. Everything in a computer is built base 2 because your uh, processors only have two options. It's either a yes or a no. Everything's written in what's called binary. So every circuit only has two options. It's either on or off. Any questions on 14? Yes, no, maybe? So don't worry. I don't expect you to be able to do that in your head. You should be able to, but you don't have to. Okay. So any questions on 14, or are we good? What about 25? What's 25 say? Right, 2 to the second, y to the third? Uh, 5 outside? Oh, to the fifth? Okay. And it says simplify, right? So these are using the exact same rules as the first set, but now we've got variables and constants, right? So this is what I was telling you. If you were doing the first set of problems by just typing them into your calculator, you'll get half the point. Okay, but this is why we want to make sure we can use the power rules properly, not just type it in. It's because if you type in Y to your calculator, it will spit out an answer if you're using a graphing calculator because it stores a value. So if you've ever stored a value for Y, it'll use it or it'll default to 1 or it'll use what's called its hexadecimal value, which is a programming thing. So it will spit out a value, but that does not make you right. So you have to be really careful with this. So, what are my bases here? How many bases do I have? Two, what are they? Two and Y. So, when I have multiple bases being multiplied inside with a power outside, what do I do with that power that's outside? All right, you distribute it down, right? So, the 5 is going to go on the base of 2, and the 5 is going to go on the base of Y. So, effectively, if I cover this up, does everybody see that I have a power to a power? Okay, so what happens when I take a power to a power? I multiply them. So basically, I'm asking you what's 2 times 5, and then what's 3 times 5. Okay, so this is half your point, right? And then if I can't evaluate the number, I need to. So what's 2 to the 10th? Okay, so I get 1,024y to the 15th, and this is my final answer. But in order to get full points, I need to see both of these. I want to see the simplified using the laws and then the evaluated side. Okay? Any major questions, comments, concerns, personal philosophies on life topics for debate? All right, so if there's still questions on your homework, make sure you bring them in tomorrow ready to go.